the Alfa Romeo 33 was introduced in the spring of 1983. The car was produced in three types of bodies. The most widespread was the five-door hatchback, or rather the liftback, in other words, a sedan, in which the fifth door rose along with the rear window. However, in 1984, station wagons appeared under the name Giardinetta, later renamed the Sport Wagon. Moreover, the station wagon based on the 33rd has a very good luggage compartment up to 1350 liters. Although a regular Alfa Romeo 33 will fit a lot of cargo, because the rear seats of this car are folding, trunk volume will then increase to 1200 liters. Also, based on the Alfa Romeo 33, the 33 Sprint Coupe was also produced, but such a car is much less common. The 11-year history of the Alfa Romeo 33 is divided into three stages from the start of production to the first restyling in 1986, then from that moment until 1990 and from 1990 to 1994. The most important advantage of third-generation cars is that they are practically free from the problems with body corrosion that worries many Alfa Romeo 33s of the 80s. Moreover, the problem of rust in this case is quite acute. There are several reasons for the low reliability of body elements. One of them was that Alfa Romeo 33 was assembled in the south of Italy in the town of Pomigliano di Arco. The southern regions at that time were much poorer than the northern ones, the labor cost there was cheaper, and the build quality left much to be desired. You can still very often hear that in order to reduce the cost of producing Alfa Romeo 33 in the early years, the Italians bought not the highest quality metal from, the Soviet Union. This is not entirely true, iron was supplied from socialist Poland. Moreover, Surprisingly, rust often appears in the back of the 33rd. It is very carefully worth examining not only the main weak points, thresholds, wheel arches, etc., but also the shock absorber mounts both front and rear. And if there are various plastic linings on the body, then you need to remember that dirt likes to accumulate under them, and such places are a typical hotbed of corrosion. So, leaky Alfa Romeo 33 are quite common. The only way out is to regularly do anti-corrosion treatment to preserve the car body. But in addition to the natural causes of body wear, the person himself also has a huge negative impact on the hardware. Unfortunately, Alfa Romeo drivers get into accidents quite often. But, as they said in the movie, the wear of the car, they are to blame for this and not to blame. Still, the image of the Alfa involuntarily encourages fast driving and many owners of this car are often jealous of the fact that someone overtakes them on the road. So it must be admitted, it is unrealistic to find an unbeaten Alfa Romeo on the secondary market now. It is better to focus on finding a well-restored car. The interior of the 33rd is made simply, but by and large meets the standards for golf class cars in the 80s. It should be noted that the driver sits quite low and deep in the car, which may not be to everyone's liking. Also controversial is the decision of the designers to place the pedals close to each other. Of course, racers are used to saving thousandths of a second when moving their foot from gas to brake, but the average driver, due to inexperience, can confuse one pedal for another. The driver's seat has only two adjustments, and a variable steering angle will help you get comfortable in the seat. The build quality of the Alfa Romeo 33 was not the best throughout its life. In the 80s, many buyers noted rather large gaps between plastic panels. Moreover, all kinds of fasteners wore out quickly, and after a couple of years after the start of operation, even when driving on smooth European roads, all kinds of creaking and crackling were heard. There were also complaints about the operation of electric windows, lighting lamps, instrument panels, etc. As for cars currently sold on the secondary market, if there are any shortcomings in the cabin, then you should not pay special attention to them. In the end, a broken window regulator can be repaired for $30 to $50, but a non-working air conditioner can require much more money. On the showdown, parts for it are rare, and they are not cheap. For example, a used compressor for it will cost at least $100, and in fact, in addition to it, the air conditioner radiator, $450 for a new part, and the evaporator dryer, $400, often break. And these are just the main details. So when buying a car with a non-working air conditioner, you need to be prepared to invest about $1,000 in the repair of the last one. But it is worth noting that there are not so many Alfa Romeo 33 equipped with air conditioning, about 0.5% of all cars. It is necessary to immediately note one feature of all Alfa Romeo 33 gasoline engines, they are boxer. That is, the cylinders in them are not located vertically or V-shaped, but horizontally. 
This design is more compact and has a low center of gravity, which is extremely important for sports cars, because it is easier to achieve better stability on the road. But at the same time, the boxers are somewhat more complex in design than conventional inline engines, especially 16-valve units. As for the cost of the capital, it is about the same as for many other foreign cars, about $1,000 to $1,500 for major repairs and $300 to $600 for relatively minor breakdowns, for example, when the timing belt breaks. Initially, two engines of 1.3 liters and 1.5 liters were installed on the Alfa Romeo 33. The smaller engine had a single carburetor and produced 75 horsepower, while the 1.5 liter unit was already equipped with a dual carburetor, 95 horsepower. Also in the mid 80s, a 105 horsepower 1.5 liter engine was also produced, which was installed on a charged version of the QV. Quadrifoglio Verde, translated means clover leaf. Since 1986, the Alfa Romeo 33 QV of the second series received a completely new 1.7 liter boxer engine with a 114 horsepower double carburetor. But cars with an engine of 1.5 liters, 105 horsepower, began to be designated as 33T, the 95 horsepower unit was discontinued. The power of the 1.3 liter engine has also increased. With a conventional carburetor, he gave out 79 horsepower, Alfa Romeo 33 Jr., and with a double, already 86 horsepower, the model was called 33 1.3S. Well, since the late 80s, Alfa Romeo began to be equipped with injection engines. The first sign was a 1.7 liter engine, slightly less powerful than its carburetted counterpart, 105 horsepower, or 110 horsepower depending on modification. However, then a 1.7 liter 16 valve appeared, with a capacity of 133 horsepower, or 129 horsepower in the version with the catalyst. Later equipped with an injector and a 1.3 liter engine, 90 horsepower, Alfa Romeo 33 1.4. When choosing a car, you should not focus on the engine size and the design of the power system. All options have their pros and cons. First of all, you need to look at the technical condition. However, it must be remembered that carburetor versions are not at all more reliable than injection ones, sometimes you can hear such an opinion. Italian engines use complex carburetors, quite reliable, but by now many of them are already quite worn out and cannot be adjusted. This problem is especially painful for twin carburetors. Injection systems are also prone to breakdowns, and its restoration is quite expensive. If the brains have flown, then the original ones will cost almost $1,000 and the used ones $250. So before buying a car you need to break in. A normally operating power unit, for example, in second gear does not stupid at least up to 6,500 RPM. And there should not be a terrible roar with strong vibrations. It should be noted that cars with a simple 1.3 liter engine were in the greatest demand, they, of course, were the cheapest, as well as with the powerful 1.7 liter engine. At the same time, it is not particularly worth looking for the last option, since even with the 79 horsepower unit, the Alfa Romeo 33 is quite fast. As for version 33 1.716 V, Alfa Romeo owners with experience do not recommend buying such cars to young people who have just received their rights, due to inexperience, getting into a serious accident on this car is easier than a steam turnip, maximum speed is 210 km h. In addition, the 16-valve engine is the most complex in its design, and its repair is more expensive, because it has as many as four camshafts. It is because of this that many call a car with an 8-valve 1.7-liter unit the most optimal purchase. One of its features is the presence of hydraulic lifters on engines manufactured after 1988. Their slightest knock during work should alert you, as soon you will have to prepare for quite serious expenses, the work of replacing them is very laborious. In addition, Running hydraulic lifters usually lead to the fact that you have to buy a new camshaft, or even two, each of which costs about $200 to $300. As a result, it runs about $400 to $800. In general, all Alfa Romeo 33 gasoline engines are moderately reliable. However, by now, almost all of them have traveled more than 200,000 kilometers, so when purchasing this car, you need to immediately set aside $500 for one or another engine repair. Moreover, checking the power unit before buying can easily show that everything is in order with the engine, and after two or three months it will knock. 
Often this trouble occurs due to torn timing belts, due to the cunning design of the motors, there are two of them at once, or jamming of one of the rollers, there are four of them on a 16-valve engine, and two each on an 8-valve engine. This problem is so relevant for Alfa Romeo 33 that some service stations recommend changing belts and rollers on a 16-valve engine every 10 to 15,000 kilometers, which costs about $200, on an 8-valve engine. The timing mechanism is quite reliable and requires replacement every 50,000 kilometers. At the same time, timing belts and rollers are highly recommended to buy original ones even despite their higher cost. Alfa Romeo 33 was also equipped with a 1.8-liter three-cylinder turbo diesel developed by the Italian company VM, which produced 74 horsepower or 84 horsepower but cars with such engines are now almost never found. And this is for the best, since there is no point in buying an old diesel Alfa, VM engines are not very reliable, and there are big problems with their repair in Russia. In the Alfa Romeo 33 model range, two versions with an all-wheel drive system should be especially noted. The rear axle was connected to them using a button or a mechanical toggle switch, all-wheel drive was recommended to be used only in wet weather, due to the lack of a center differential. A later modification of all-wheel drive vehicles already had an automatically connected rear axle, through a viscous coupling. Permanent 4 or Q4 were the most luxurious modifications of the Alfa Romeo 33 and had a 16-valve engine, Recaro Sports interior, ABS, etc. Naturally, they hold the road better but may require more complex and expensive repairs. The gearbox was installed only mechanical. And here is one problem. On so many machines the second gear synchronizer is worn out. Some car owners do not pay attention to this and drive for a long time with a poorly switched second, although if the gears are switched on with great difficulty, then you need to remember that the repair of the gearbox will cost several hundred dollars. You need to check the clutch too. It is not too survivable. 40 to 80,000 kilometers. Suspension, 33rd, is very stiff, but it is perceived as completely normal. When checking it, you must first look at the condition of the shock absorbers, springs, and supports of the front struts. Everything else is cheap to fix. Interestingly, when operating the Alfa Romeo 33, drivers almost immediately realize that something has worn out in the suspension, as bad sounds instantly appear, and the car loses its excellent handling. The Alfa Romeo 33 was first introduced in May 1983 and replaced another front-wheel drive model called Alfa Romeo Sud, which was produced from 1971 to 1983. The new 33rd was named after two famous models, Alfa Romeo Tipo 33 and Alfa Romeo 33 Straight Ale. Both of these cars have repeatedly won various races. It is generally accepted that the 11-year history of the Alfa Romeo 33 is divided into three stages from the beginning of production to the first restyling in 1986, then from that moment to 1990 and from 1990 to 1994. The latest series of cars, internal body designation 907, differs from the previous one in a more modern appearance and good equipment. Initially, Alfa Romeo 33 was equipped only with carburetted boxer engines of 1.3 liters and 1.5 liters. In 1983, an all-wheel drive version of the car was released, as well as a modification with the station wagon body. In 1985, a coupe appeared. In those days, Alfa Romeo was still independent. It came under the control of Fiat in 1986, and 33rd was of great importance to it, a kind of hope for the future. Looking ahead, we can say that these reliable ones did not quite materialize. She was in demand, but she did not become a leader in sales. Although in Italy and France, many liked it. At the end of 1986, a powerful 1.7-liter engine and a three-cylinder turbo diesel were added to the range of Alfa Romeo 33 engines. At the same time, the car underwent the first modernization. A more serious restyling took place in 1990, the car received a thoroughly redesigned appearance, and the version with the 1.7-liter injection 16-valve engine became the flagship of the lineup. In 1994, the Alfa Romeo 33 was discontinued, and it was replaced by a new model three-door hatchback Alfa Romeo 145. At the end of the same 1994, they began to produce a five-door version, Alfa Romeo 146. At first, this car also had boxer engines, but since 1996 year, inline four-cylinder units also appeared. In 2000, the Alfa Romeo 147 was shown, which received the title of Car of the Year 2001. 
This car is now being equipped with various engines, including a 3.2-liter V6 with 250 horsepower, version 147 GTA appeared in 2002.